What's up you guys? Today is another episode of Taylor Talks, the video series in which I just chat with you guys. No script, no nothing other than really a topic and me talking. Um, and today I wanted to talk about how to be a remote developer, um, how to be successful at it, what are the pitfalls, what are the advantages, and overall just kind of what it's like to be a remote developer in 2018. So I've had one, two, four different remote jobs in my life. Um, at varying different times. I originally worked in some startups, they ran out of some money, um, and then I found some other jobs, and then I worked for as a government contractor for a while until the contract was up, and then now in my current position I'm also remote. So I, I've, I've worked at a lot of different remote jobs and I've landed a bunch of remote jobs, and that's probably the thing I wanna hit on first is how do you get a remote job? Is how do you how do you actually nail it? How do you nail the interview? How do you uh, obtain one? Because as a developer, I think everyone can kind of agree that working from home is kind of the de facto dream, right? Everyone wants to do that. Everyone wants to work from home because no one wants to have to go into an office. No one wants to have a commute. No one wants to have to do any of that. You know what I mean? And so it's always been kind of the dream of most developers to work from home. And so that's the that's the holy grail and so when you think about a remote job it's how do you get that so first of all <clears throat> they're going to be all kinds of job postings for remote stuff there's not just one field that is remote it's not like web developers are more remote um, sure there's certain jobs that you can't do remote like um, certain hardware based things where you're actually writing like low-level system software on some sort of actual physical device that you can't have at your house um, but other than that, most of the time you you can work remote at any software development job, whether you're writing C++ or whether you're writing you know JavaScript on a web development server or anything. There, there's a bunch of different options for how you can work remote. So, say there's a job listing. What's going to happen is it's not just going to be you and a few other applicants applying for it. When it's remote, the the job application is open to the world essentially most of the time they're even open internationally so it's not just you competing with like say your peers in your class of college that you're graduating with and trying to find a job it's you competing with all of your peers all of people who are older than you people who have uh, some sort of restrictions so they can't leave the house so they apply to every remote job they could possibly think of you're competing against veterans who live in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, you know, these Silicon Valley types. Um, and so you're competing with all of them, not only that, but also internationally. You're competing with people who um, work in India or China or Europe, and sometimes, a lot of the times, they'll charge a lot less or they'll require a lot less money from the company to work for them, and they might be just as qualified, if not more. And so um, it's really, really competitive when you're trying to find a remote job. And that's the first thing is how do you how do you stand out? How do you get a remote job when there's literally sometimes thousands of applications? So the first thing that I always do is I, I always make a cover letter, but I always make it short and incredibly sweet. I generally try and limit it to one little paragraph um, and I basically try and address their job posting and or the job directly and that's it. I really don't like to specify things that I already have in my resume. I don't like to specify things about the company in general. Um, some people will say, you know, do your research on the company, you'll find out more about it. But really I don't like that because it's too much time and the people reading these have literally hundreds more to get to. So making it short and sweet is nice. Um, I like to try and in my paragraph kind of allude that I'm qualified for the position that I meet specifically the requirements that they're looking for and that I'm willing to learn and just kind of some generic boilerplate stuff. But you, once you once you do that for a while, you'll get kind of used to it. And if you can get to the point where you get an interview, you've already made it further than almost anyone. So your first interview is really a really big deal. Don't think, oh, you know, it's just a first interview, it's just a screening. Like they probably turned down hundreds of clients to or hundreds of applicants rather to give you that opportunity to have that first interview that first screening because they they still might be screening a hundred people but you've made it through the biggest filter you're going to have to deal with up until then and then once you once you get in there you really just have to try and be charismatic and try and be positive and not be somber like say for instance you you have like 90 percent of the qualifications but there's one thing that you're not really a hundred percent on I always come out with that right at the bat. I say, you know, I think I'm a great f fit for this position, but I definitely don't have 
all of the experience in this field that you guys are looking for, but I'm working on it. This is These are the steps that I'm trying to work on it. And the reason I bring that up first is because you don't want them to get attached to you. Um, say you have one, two, maybe three interviews, and then on the third one or even the fourth one, they find out that you're not really skilled in that one area. Then it's going to be like a, oh, okay, well, we thought he was going to be a good fit, but now maybe not so much. Whereas if you tell them right off the bat, they have that in the back of their mind and they kind of compartmentalize that. And I found that they often will even let it go to the wayside because you tell them right out, right up front, hey, this is the thing that I'm not great at. And then you follow up with the rest of the interview talking about all your skills and your strengths and what you're good at. And they'll eventually, you know, enjoy you as a person and they'll want your skills and they'll kind of forget about that thing you told them at the beginning or they'll help you work on that. Um, and so, so anyways, so let's say you go through the whole gambit, you battle out for an uh, interview, you go through several interviews and you actually get a job. How do you be successful in a remote environment? Like I said, it's kind of the dream of everyone because I think everyone has the stereotype that you'll just kind of sit back and relax and just chill all day and, you know, wake up whenever you want and, you know, type some code and commit, uh, take a three hour lunch, you know, like like the typical stuff that you might associate with working at home, working in your underwear, that kind of stuff. Um, so personally for me, I my experience has not really been like that. There are a few advantages, like I don't have a commute and that's really awesome. I get to work on my own desktop environment. I don't have to work on some crappy computer that the company gave me, so that's another benefit. And I get to be at home, so if you know some sort of emergency comes up, if my dogs need to go to the bathroom, that kind of stuff, like I can do all that because I'm here um, without really taking away from my work. Um, so given that, um, what I do to keep focused and what I do to actually get stuff done is I get dressed every morning in like pretty, pretty much um, not full business attire, but much more so than any of my remote colleagues. Like most of the time they'll wear like a t-shirt. I almost always wear a button up and jeans or a button up and uh, like actual pants. Like I never wore sweatpants. Um, and the reason I do that is I think there's something about that mentality of getting up in the morning and getting ready that kind of just gets me ready for the day and kind of wakes me up. Um, and then I'll go downstairs and um, I also try and lock out all of the distractions. So like I said, I do have some dogs. Um, but I just go upstairs and check on them at lunch. Beyond that, I like shut the door, I turn off all the distractions, and I'm just in my room. It's incredibly quiet in here, and I just focus and get stuff done, and it's great. Um, one of the other things that you have to pay a lot of attention to is actually being productive, especially in the very first, probably I'd say month of work, you have to be on it. You have to, if they message you on Slack or Skype and they ping, 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 you have to be hitting them right back right away because what you definitely don't want to happen is them to get the association that you're never at your computer or you always take 10 minutes to respond because you're off doing X, Y, or Z. And it doesn't matter if you really are, maybe you're really just in the moment, you're really focused on programming and you just don't have time to like reply to them on Slack or Skype or something. But within the first few months, take a concentrated effort and really try and focus on those types of things. Even if you're not great at them normally, just make sure that you reply to people. Make sure you're quickly and readily available. If they have a question, just screen share them. That, that kind of thing really builds a lot of confidence that you're actually working and actually doing what you say you're doing because that's kind of the that's kind of the only reason why every company in the world isn't remote with the exception of the ability to properly network and properly physically do things um, like if you're a construction company obviously not but most business type jobs could absolutely be remote but companies don't trust their employees and they know that they'll goof off and they'll know that they won't do xyz so that's really what you're combating when you're a remote employee is making sure that you produce and making sure that they think that you're on topic all the time and i, I mean ideally you should be on topic but primarily in order to succeed in a remote environment you have they they have to have that confidence they have to know that you're actually working on stuff they have to see that you're active and not away they have to see that you're committing code at the end of every day and so um, that's kind of all I really have to do to be successful and it's it's not that much right um, but it's actually kind of amazing how many of my colleagues will work remote and they can't handle it because they're just not they don't work that way you know when you go into an office and you get let off a half day early you're really excited and you go home and it's like whatever but when you're home all the time you just a lot of people can't get in that work mode and that's part of why i get dressed every morning and that's why i close my door and 
leave all other distractions when I walk through the door and that's why I always try and be readily available on all kinds of communication because you you just have to be in the zone and you have to get stuff done and that's not to say that there's not any benefit to working remote um, like I said you you don't have to commute you don't have to buy new clothes you know to fit in with your environment you don't have to do lunches and weird stuff if, if you're a programmer a lot of the time there's the social awkwardness to that and you don't really want to go do all that kind of stuff anyway so there's a definite benefit to it but I think that people have this misconception that you just sit around in your underwear all day and you can kind of do whatever you want and make your own schedule and some people get that lucky but most people especially like myself really have to focus up and uh, make sure that you're properly dressed and properly you know properly working so Anyways, that was the video. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos or if you have another topic that you want me to do my next Taylor Talks About, um, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, later guys.